Hey, everybody. Welcome to Ultimate Insider. I'm Mike Pulaski. And as I told you, we are going to do the bowl review this week. Independence Bowl, uh, the Bears getting to 6-6, six and six, finding a way into bowl eligibility. So a fantastic job to finish this season. Uh, a lot of resilience on this team. So I'd love to see it. They fought through some injury. They fought through uh, some early issues in terms of uh, guys not living up to what they needed to do. They missed some games. I think we can all look back at Auburn and think, whoa, what a difference that would have been uh, to get that game. But in the end, they found a way to get it done, to win three in a row, which is tough in the Pac-12. Uh, and, you know, we get, got the big win at UCLA to finish off the season. So they get a trip to Shreveport. And I have played in Shreveport. When I was in the CFL, they had a team down there called the Shreveport Pirates. So I both played for the Baltimore CFL team that went down there to travel. And I've got a story about that game uh, that I'll tell in just a second when I interview Coach. But uh, I also played for the Shreveport Pirates and fellow Cal alum, Robbie Keene, our All-American kicker and punter at Cal, was also the punter down there in Shreveport. So a couple Cal guys have history in Shreveport. And I am looking forward to, by the way, interesting coincidence, when I was down there, I was playing with Billy Joe Tolliver, who was the former Texas Tech Red Raider star uh, as a quarterback. So he was down there, and in the end, I think he moved his family to Shreveport. Haven't talked to BJ in a long, long time, but uh, I'll have to give him a call, see if he's still down there. So interesting tie-ins for Cal and Texas Tech, both in this bowl game. But let's talk about the game and what to expect coming in. Obviously, uh, there's been some departures at Cal. You've you've seen some players leave. Caleb Elarms Orr decided to take off, uh, put his name in the portal, off to Washington. And then there's been other guys who put their name in the portal. And then there's also guys who put their name in the portal, but they're also playing in this game, which is interesting in and of itself. Uh, ben Finley, one of those. Uh, Mateen Bagani, another one of those as a kicker, which I don't understand that one because he finally got a shot at the spot and kept the field goal spot. But, you know, it is what it is. Guys are going to do what they're going to do. Uh, college players are young, and that's the way it is. So uh, oftentimes it's better to get better where you are, grow where you're planted, uh, and become the best player you can become where you are. Uh, but some guys think the grass is greener. So, you know, good luck to anybody who chooses that. Always wish everybody the best. My Bears, they played here. It's uh, it's tough to be a college football player for sure. All said and done. Uh, every team's dealing with that right now, and it's interesting going in. So coming back in, Cal has quarterback Fernando Mendoza, uh, running back Jay Knott coming in. Jay Hunt is up. Like A lot of Cal's players are up. Taj Davis is gone uh, off the roster. And a few other guys that were contributors gone off the roster. But they will play with what they got. And that's just the way it's going to be going into this game. Let's talk about the Red Raiders. On defense, there's a familiar name as a defensive coordinator, Tim DeRuiter. A coach who at Cal was, uh, he was a D coordinator at Cal as well. And he was a really good football coach. Really liked Tim when he was a bear. He was really smart with what he did. He was a very good coordinator. Uh, he was a great dude. He, he was one of the very few D coordinators, and actually Peter Sermon, another one who I just love walking in their office and talking football with them. Just both fantastic dudes. But Tim was a guy that I kind of started that trait with. I guess I did it with a lot because Bob Gregory was also a dude who I loved to sit in his office. But uh, those three guys, Cal D coordinators, uh, was always great to hang out with. Tim is really good. And I'm getting a little ADHD on you here. But his defense now averaging 27 points per game which is the best that Texas Tech has done in that department since 2009, I believe. So he has turned around that defense last year, uh, made them better than they were prior than him getting there, and then this year they're even better. So he's going to run essentially a lot of what you saw him run at Cal. He's going to run even fronts, uh, which he's going to find ways using his big guys up front to allow his linebackers to be stars. He did it. If you'll remember the duos that he had at Cal, some really good ones. But uh, Evan Weaver and Jordan Kanashek, probably the pinnacle of that for me, two dudes that just were playing like crazy. And so uh, he's doing the same thing down there, allowing his players to make plays, allowing his linebackers to run and hit, and allowing his defensive line to be gap sound, gap responsible, uh, play well, and create space for the linebackers to make plays. 
They'll run a little bit of odd. Odd front is all about linebackers, you know, stuffing gaps, two gapping, and all of that. It's a run stopping defense. He does a little bit of that, um, but mostly that even front letting the linebackers run. In the secondary, they run about 75% zone. And in that zone, it's probably majority, like vast majority, 60% cover three. And then they run, you know, maybe 30% cover two and then some junk around it, some other stuff, six and, and not, excuse me, not cover two, 30% cover four. Um, and then some junk around it, two trap and two and, you know, some prevent stuff all kinds of different looks that he can throw at you, a little bit of robber and rat and that kind of stuff. So, uh, but mostly zone, mostly cover three, good run stopping defense and a defense that keeps you really from getting over the top as long as you don't exploit the seams. And so uh, he's going to keep everything underneath. He's going to tackle the run and he's going to make you earn your way down the field, which is what he tried to do at Cal as well. Uh, He will run a little bit of exotic stuff, about 5% exotic stuff. Uh, where he'll just bring a corner blitz for no apparent reason, or he'll bring a safety down and fire a, a zone. So uh, Bears have to be on the lookout for that. It doesn't happen a lot, but when he gets it right, uh, it can be disruptive to the offense, and it can be a momentum changer. So again, really good football coach, really good dude. I'm going to enjoy seeing Tim again this week. Uh, top player on that defense to look for is linebacker Ben Roberts, number 13. He is a freshman defensive player of the year in the Big 12. He runs around. He is all over the ball. Again, Tim Durder's defense designed to make linebackers stars. You remember Kanashik. You remember Evan Weaver. You remember the guys that played in that system and how good they can be. And uh, this kid's going to be really, really good. Just a freshman this year, had over 100 or had 100 tackles on the nose, five tackles for loss, an interception. Uh, was just a really good player, and he pops on film. As soon as you turn on the film, you see number 13 running around. So Ben Roberts, one to look for, good football player. They are going to be without Jalen Hutchings. He was their nose guard. He was a stout, twitchy defensive player at that interior line. Uh, He could hold his own, and he fought pressure. So as a defensive lineman, you're taught that wherever they're trying to block you, you fight across the face of that and get the gap uh, next to it. And so you try to fight that pressure to cut off the run. He was really good at that, and he was athletic enough and agile enough to make that happen. So he is out injury-wise, will not be in this game, finish his career with an injury there at Texas Tech, but he was a pretty good football player. They still have number 97, gentleman by the name of Tony Bradford. Uh, they call him the mayor because he does a lot of community service work, so good on him. Good football player inside. He has five tackles for loss, uh, four sacks as a nose guard. And a guy who is also twitchy, who is stout, who is physical inside, a good football player. So keep your eye on him, Tony Bradford. Uh, In the back end, uh, it's Dadrian Taylor Demerson is their number one interceptor, number one. Uh, He is all over the field. He's a bit of a ball hawk playing in that zone defense, finds a way to make plays. Uh, Four interceptions on the season. Their whole secondary, just as a matter of thought, is really tall. So 6'1", 6'2", 6'3", across the board. Big guys back there uh, that in that zone, they cover a lot of space, big wingspans. So they can make things happen in that secondary. Overall, a good Big 12 defense. Remember, the Big 12 not really known for their defense. Uh, Big 12 really more of an offense type uh, of conference. And so that's what you get. 27 points per game is what they allow. They're 6-6. Six and six. And it's funny, if you look down the stat sheet... They are like just one under, one below, just a tick less than their opponent in almost everything. It's it's eerie how close they are, uh, but just behind in everything. Like they they allow 27 points per game, but they only score 26.8 points per game. It's that kind of thing. And it's all the way down the stat line like that. It's it's just a weird, it's the weirdest anomaly I've seen in terms of stats uh, in my years of doing this. So Anyway, uh, expect good defense. I expect to see a lot of offense in this game, hopefully, because that is what makes it fun. Now, oftentimes, bowl games are sloppy because you haven't played in a couple weeks and you get some of that sloppiness out. But I would love to see a lot of offense. Uh, That said, right now, let's talk to Coach. I'll come back and talk about their offense when we get back, and then uh, we'll wrap this thing up. Head Coach Justin Wilcox, and 
our first bowl game postseason in a couple of years. How's that feel? Oh, it feels good. Uh, I thought thought we had a, a bowl caliber team, you know, early, early on in this process. And uh, there's some games, obviously, we didn't uh, finish as well as we would have liked. Um, but I'm really proud of the way the guys rallied to finish the season and earn a bowl berth. And, uh, yeah, it's good to be busy this time of year as we were just talking, you know. We got finals this week. We got finals all the way up to the bowl game because it's an early bowl game. But that's a good thing, and we're we're uh, excited to go play. Yeah, it's so funny for people that play at Cal, people that haven't, but students that were there. You start your season like you're you're just entering school as season starts, and so you're trying to get classes and do everything else as your first game starts, and then you're finishing your semester it, during bowl season, and so it gets to be kind of clunky as a student athlete as a football player during those times of year. Uh, and, you know, there's some teams that are quarters that don't start until they've had four games before they ever get started in school. So it's an interesting lifestyle for for a Cal Bear as a semester. Um, but anyway, that's all besides the point. It is what it is. So there's nothing you can do about it. Let's move on. We're talking about the bowl game now. So you're going to Shreveport, a place I know very well. And I'll tell the quick Shreveport story. I told radio crew that they would hear this. We go down to play. I, I'm, I'm playing in the CFL at this point. There was a team in Baltimore and a team in Shreveport. And we're playing in the Independence Bowl Stadium, right? That's that's where they play. And the team from Baltimore, we show up and we get in the locker room. And all of a sudden, I hear our trainer go, what the hell? And I go walk in the training room and he opens it up and he goes, look at this. And I look in there and there's about a 10-pound largemouth bass sitting on top of the ice, just uh-huh. sitting there on, on the ice. And it, the trainer looks at me and goes, what is that? I go, well, that's a really nice bass. Like, that's right. a really good largemouth. And he goes, what the hell is it doing on the ice? I'm like, I don't know. I didn't catch it, but clearly somebody's trying to save it. You know, they're trying to preserve it. So the equipment guy from their team comes in, or one of the sub equipment guys, and the trainer goes, what is this? He goes, yeah, it's pretty good. I caught it out of the canal out back this morning. I'm going to get it mounted. And he goes, but it's sitting on our ice. All the ice is contaminated. We can't use it. He's like, oh, I didn't think about didn't that. Didn't think about it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so they literally had to run to the store and pick up truckloads of ice for the team but that's that is Shreveport, Shreveport. I love it me I love, I love it, it. I, I, that's what every day after practice I would go back home and fly fish for bass on the pond that was near my house I so love it a lot of experience great food fantastic people yeah tell me what you know about Shreveport after my story uh exactly what you just said incredible people hospitality they take a lot of pride in the bowl game it's been around a long long time um you know it's a It's not a small community, but it's smaller. And so, uh, again, the hospitality and the pride they take in Shreveport in the bowl game, uh, it'll be a special experience for our coaches and players to go down there. Many of our uh, players haven't been to Louisiana before, so to be able to go down there and experience that in a different part of the country, it'll be really special. Yeah, and and it's pretty amazing. The people are great. The food is incredible down there, right? You get kind of the Cajun mess with Southern, and it's it's really, really good. So it's a fantastic place. Uh, I think culturally for the kids from California, from the West Coast to get to see that is pretty cool as well. Yeah. Um, talk to me about your opponent, Texas Tech. You know a lot of these coaches pretty well. Obviously, Tim DeRuiter on your staff, he was your D coordinator. Uh, you've coached with him pretty well. Talk to me about the Red Raiders and what you see, what you know about them. Yeah, good football team, really talented running back. Uh, they've ran the ball more this year. they they got a really good uh, young quarterback as well. Um but they're skilled. I mean, uh, Coach McGuire's got a great reputation in in our industry, and you you see, and Coach Kitley on offense does a, does a really good job. They're different than uh, uh, this year than they were last year because they're playing to the strengths of their team, which any great coach does. Same thing with the Ruder and Marcel and Cop Cottery. Those guys do a great job, so we know that they're going to be well coached. And again, offensively, the back, the quarterback, uh, defensively, the inside backers are really good player. They're twitched up. They got a really good twitchy uh, interior lineman. Then they got some real size uh, along the front. So uh, they run the ball very, very well. I think the run game is going to have a lot to do with this game. You know, who who wins the the battle in the run game and uh, turnover margin. You know, we got to do a great job of, of protecting the football and find ways to take it away. Yeah, I found it interesting that Kitley – is two years removed from having the number one passing offense ever in the NC2A, right? When you yeah. had Zappy and they were really good. 
And then he, he came in last year. They passed the ball really well. This year, they're number three in the country. The running back is number three in the country in terms of total yards, I believe. Yep. So he has completely changed what his focus is, maybe in part because Tyler Shuck got hurt early on or quarterback changes or whatever it may be. But they are it's a different football team when you look at them on film from last year and to what he did two years ago to what he's doing now. Yeah, he's a uh, – I get it. It's what it – any good coach does. They want to build the the scheme around the players, and he has enough range. Whether you want to throw it and lead the country in passing, or you you got the third leading rusher in in the country, so that just speaks to the coaching, I think. Uh, so they do a really good job of that. Um, that's impressive. But again, that's what coaching is: It's not being so rigid about your system that you uh, don't use the the strength of the players on that given team. So uh, really impressive what they've done. Yeah, and and still it comes out of that air raid base back to Cliff Kingsbury, back to Mike Leach, right? As it, as you trace it all the way back, in that they're going to throw a bunch of different looks at you. They're going to throw shifts, and they're going to throw some gadgets at you, and they're going to spread the field and run verticals. And there's options in it. Yep. So talk about defending this look as opposed to the stuff that you've seen around the conference this year. Well, they are, there's a lot of guys that come out of this tree, you know, and even. You'd look at our offense and say there's some similarities there. That's why the, the practice is getting ready. We have enough uh, kind of common looks on both sides. We've done a, a fair amount of good on good. Doesn't mean they're the exact same because they're not. But, uh, yeah, you do see that the air raid background with the option routes and the verticals and the sits and the uh, quarters beaters and all those, uh, you know, decision-making routes that, that are part of that system. So uh, it's been good for us to, to go against our own offense. But it, it, at the end of the day, you got to go out and compete against the team you're playing on Saturday, and they'll be they'll be different than we are. And uh, I would say uh, ultimately, it kind of goes back to just executing the calls and and uh, winning in the trenches in the run game, both sides taking care of it. And when we have our chances to hit an explosive and on defense, make sure we're tackling well because that back's really really good, and that we're limiting any of the explosive plays. So that covers the defensive side of the ball. Now, offensively, you've had some staff changes. Right. So a little hard to keep continuity. You have Mike Blesh there, kind of keeps the center of it with the offensive line and Coach Plows staying on for the bowl game. But talk about losing Spav and kind of what that does on your offensive side, the continuity and how you fill those gaps. Uh, uh, yeah. You know, it's just part of college football. And I would say uh, because of Coach Blesh and the influence he had in our offense and along with Coach Plow, who had uh, so much to do with our pass game, uh, it's been. It's rather seamless, to be honest with you. And so uh, to, p- putting the plan together, very, very smooth. Uh, we were really uh, sad to lose uh, Tim. Tim's a hell of a coach. I mean, he's a big-time coach and an a even better guy. But uh, we're happy that you know he's getting the job at his alma mater. Um, but he, he wanted to stay on, which we're really pleased about for the bowl game. He just – he really cares about the players and uh, – so we're grateful, uh, but in terms of the game plan and the rhythm of practice and all that, honestly, it's been incredibly smooth. Yeah, that's tough to do. Staying on while you're still recruiting and yeah. like all that at once. So tough duty for him working the bowl game and working his his alma mater as a head coach. So congratulations to him as well. Yeah. Um, talk to me about offensively going up against Tim DeRuiter, right? Knowing what he does. What do they do defensively? Uh, as you watch it on film, it's very similar to kind of what he did in the past, and he's just playing to his personnel. But talk about how you attack the defense the way he's running it this year. Yeah, I mean, they're going to be a four down and a little bit of odd and and uh, bare front. Very similar uh, in some ways to us. Um, you know, he, he'll, he'll throw some zeros at you. You know, you'll get a zero in traditional zero situations, and then you might get a zero in a non-traditional zero situation. Um, so... Uh, again, there's a lot, enough familiar looks with the fronts and coverages. We've been able to kind of call things that we have within our menu to just practice against our or, or our offense to practice against. Um, but they'll be good. They got a really good inside linebacker. They got a, uh, a twitchy interior tackle, as I mentioned. They got skill on the perimeter. You know, in Texas, there's a lot of good skill players. So they got skill players at the corner nickel spot. So they're good. What has your practice schedule been like the last couple of weeks leading up to this? Yeah, let's see here. So the first week we were working out, then we practiced on the weekend, Saturday, Sunday. 
And then we had a Tuesday, Thursday practice last week. And then last weekend we went, we've been going since last Saturday. Saturday, Sunday were heavy game plan type days. Uh, Monday was a lighter day. That was yesterday. Today's another heavy game plan, uh, intensive pad day. And then tomorrow we travel. We'll have a, a run through when we get there. Not long, about 45 minutes. Uh, Thursday will be a uh, half of the practice will be padded and the other half will take the pads off and finish. And then we'll do our normal Friday routine. So we've got a, uh, a good amount of game plan practices in. We've also got a, a really good, uh, some really good work with our developmental squad, getting some of those younger players, these valuable reps. And that's one of the key things about a bowl, going to a bowl, right? Getting those extra practices that you wouldn't normally get. So you're going to get an extra, about what, 14 practices in, or at least workout sessions in, oh, yeah. in this off week. And so talk about how much of a difference that makes in terms of reps for the younger players. Huge. It's almost like an extra spring ball in, in, in some ways. And then also that you're working out and practicing later into December. So when you start back up in January, you hadn't been off for a month and a half. So that matters as well. So it all, it all adds up. That's, I mean, there's, there's so much value in bowl games and, uh, you know, the bowl season's a little longer than it used to be. You got early bowl games like we're in, then it goes all the way into January. But uh, we're certainly glad to be involved with it and t- making the most of it. And talk about it, getting the early bowl game. It's kind of a blessing, too, in that you can go play your bowl game, you get your reps, and then you can go get on the, you know, playing and recruit while other guys are getting prepped for bowl games. Well, I yes, the only thing there is it goes dead on Sunday. Mm. or quiet Sunday dead on Monday. So we technically can't go out on the road. It goes uh, dead uh, the Monday we get back. And then it goes dead all the way through till early January. So we don't actually get to go out. Right. Uh, this week that we're in is actually a week that we're traditionally out. So we're doing some kind of morning visits. We got in homes, practice. Uh, it's, it's likely that when we're down there at the bowl site doing practices, we might have to zip out and go see somebody. So we're cr- this week's a little different because we're we're recruiting. We got players finals. We're getting ready for a game, um, and in a traditional bowl uh, schedule, this week you'd actually just be out recruiting and doing visits and practicing on the weekend. So, but it is what it is, and we're uh, we're just happy to be playing and excited to compete one more time. And does the recruiting piece, as you say that, does go dead, you know, going dead, does that go dead for the NIL transfer portal as well? Or are they still out there? Or can you still talk to them? Like, how still do talk to them. I mean, we're, we'll be on these things nonstop. Uh, and then we can bring transfer portal guys in in early January. And then the high school guys can start visiting again. I think it's like the 10th or, you know, when it opens back up right after the uh, convention there. So a lot of work and a lot of prep going on. Yeah. Outstanding. Well, safe travels this week. Looking forward to the game coming up. Uh, and congratulations on the bowl. We haven't talked since the UCLA game. So awesome. congratulations on getting that final win, getting the bowl. Awesome. Thanks, Mike. Go Bears. Go Bears. So that's Coach on Texas Tech Red Raiders. Uh, coming up, I'll talk about the offense real quick. Zach Kitley is the offensive coordinator. Coach talked about him a little bit. This is the dude. A, he's a Texas Tech alum. They do a fantastic job of hiring alums at Texas Tech. I think it's a wonderful thing. I think it's great. Uh, and I love seeing it. Uh, they have done it, you know, through the course of the years in terms of dudes that they have brought back to coach there. Uh, but Kitley, really good in that uh, coordinator spot right now. He had a couple of years ago, a kid by the name of Bailey Zappi at Western Kentucky, who broke, shattered all of the NC2A passing records, passing records for touchdowns, yards, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so he's really good about being in that air raid family tree, right? It started with Hal Mummy, Mike Leach, originally based on, interestingly enough, the wishbone and what Lavelle Edwards was doing at BYU together, kind of spreading things out, creating leverage points and figuring out how to make that happen uh, with the option, creating leverage on one dude. Uh, Pretty special. We'll talk about it. I'll do a podcast about it some time and talk about the air raid and the concepts and how they make it easier for the quarterback. But anyway, from that tree, uh, has done a great job. And this year was able to adjust because he's on his third quarterback. Uh, they've had injuries. And so for the second year in a row, he's had injuries at that quarterback spot. Tyler Shuck, who was a transfer from Oregon, ended up getting hurt 
again this year. He's a really good football player too, so sad to see that. Um, but he's a guy that uh, can play. They lost him early, I think, in the fourth game. Ended up going with Baron Morton at quarterback. Uh, you're going to see him 60% passer, 12 touchdowns, seven interceptions, uh, five and one back there the last couple games. So he's won some games towards the end of the season, uh, but uh, also lost a big one to Texas. And uh, he's a guy who, when he controls his throws, when he's not throwing interceptions, uh, he's much better, which I think is pretty fair for any quarterback back there. So that's going to be the, the trigger guy. He's okay. Uh, I'm not hugely overwhelmed with him back there. He was the highest rated Texas quarterback that they've ever gotten at Texas Tech. He was a four-star out of high school. So he's decent. He's okay. Uh, the offense in and of itself has committed 21 turnovers this year. They're 38% on third down conversion. Both of those stats, I think, really important, very telling stats. Um, and as I said earlier, they're only scoring 26.8 points per game. So uh, the dude who you're really going to be focused on, the dude who Cal's defense is going to be focused on, is Taj Brooks. He's the running back, number 28. Stud, all Big 12 first team, up for Doak Walker and all the other awards that are out there. Uh, rushed for 1,443 yards, nine touchdowns, which is odd. Uh, not very many touchdowns for that many yards. But he is a big punishing back, 230 pounds. Um, he is rated to have 919 yards after contact. So think about that. Two thirds of his yards come after the initial contact has broken, forced broken tackles, whatever that means, uh, uh, 91 broken tackles this year. So pretty good football player. It's just under eight a game. Uh, he's making stuff happen back there by himself as well. So he is rumbling. He is really good. He has eight games that are over a hundred and he has two more, one against Texas that was 95 yards, one against K-State that was 98 yards or else he would have had an even 10 100-yard games this year. Really, really, really good football player. This dude is a load. He will be hard to tackle. And this is what's impressive about Zach Kitley as a coordinator in that this dude loves to throw the rock. When he had Bailey Zappi, Western Kentucky, he was throwing it all over the yard. And now that he doesn't have a quarterback like that, doesn't really have a system like that, they've got you know one receiver over 40 catches and everybody else is 30 or below and and uh, they don't have a ton of big stretch the field type targets, but they do run the rock. And so Taj Brooks will get a lot of carries. He's got, I think, 264 or 265 carries on the year. That's a lot of touches at that spot, but he's a big back who can carry it. And so expect to see a lot of Taj Brooks when they are on the field on offense. And that is really going to be the focus for the Bears. Getting the ball back. So the 21 turnovers is big on that offensive side of the ball. They're actually minus seven in turnovers on the year this year. Um, and then tackling Taj Brooks. If you stop the run in this game, you're probably going to win this game because obviously the Bears are going to try to run the ball with Jaden Ott as well. So um, that's the breakdown for this game coming up. Looking forward to my trip down to Shreveport. I hope to see you guys down there. If not, you can always tune in to us on radio. Uh, I know a lot of you guys have asked questions about, you know, when I'm talking about coverages and I get a little bit in the weeds, you can always go to my YouTube channel, Elite Athletes TV, and I break down all the coverage there, four, three, one, zero, talking about blitz, talking about concepts. You'll see a lot of Cal's offensive stuff up there in terms of what we do, and I talk about quarterback play. So go there, subscribe. That'll help me out. Share it out. That will also help me out. I'd appreciate it. Uh, and you can learn a lot more about football if you're interested. In the meantime, I appreciate you guys watching here. I will talk to you again next time from Shreveport, and I will catch you on the radio. Go Bears.